Welcome to Baptism, Christianity, Significant Practice, The Summary. This is the third presentation in a three-part series on baptism. This presentation will summarise key parts of the two previous presentations. This presentation and the transcript for this presentation will be available from Sydney Catholic Schools via RE Online. Please note that this presentation is licensed to schools under the National Education Access Licence to Schools scheme. This presentation is the third in a series of three presentations. In the first presentation on baptism, we were able to explore HSC syllabus requirements. In the second presentation on baptism, we were able to depth the student's knowledge of Christian baptism, analyse baptism in five major Christian variants. In this final presentation, we will summarise key teachings on baptism, baptism in five major Christian variants, and briefly discuss a sample paper. Take a minute to revise some key takeaways about baptism from the HSC syllabus. You'll find them in the previous two presentations in this series on baptism and in a cut down form on the next couple of slides. Baptism, Christianity, Brief Syllabus Revision. In the Christian Depth Study, the syllabus is very explicit about what you should be doing in this topic. The focus of this topic is the contribution of significant people, ideas, practices and ethical teachings to an understanding of Christianity as a living religious tradition. The study of Christianity is to be of the whole tradition where applicable. This presentation will look at baptism across the whole of Christianity, East and West, with a focus on four Christian variants in Western Christianity, Anglican, Baptist, Catholic, Uniting Church, the example of Eastern Christianity that we will look at is in the Greek Orthodox variant. In the 2013 HSC Studies of Religion exam, in Section 3, the then New South Wales Board of Studies placed this diagram on the paper. It shows that the understanding that the Studies of Religion syllabus has of Christianity as a living religious tradition is that it is found at the intersection of significant people and ideas, for example, Paul of Tarsus, significant practice, for example, baptism, and ethics, for example, bioethics. You could word that as a question. How does Paul of Tarsus influence our ideas about baptism? And how does the writings of Paul of Tarsus and our understanding of baptism as a sign, a symbol, and a sacrament influence our understanding of ethics, such as bioethics? If you can answer a question like that, you will most likely be showing Christianity as a living religious tradition. There's some homework there for you. The syllabus on page 40 asks that you can demonstrate how baptism expresses the beliefs of Christianity and analyse the significance of baptism for both the individual and the Christian community. In other words, the impact of Christianity on the Christian community, such as the variant they belong to, and the impact on the adherent or believer. If you can do these two things well, you will have gone a long way in addressing the areas required by the syllabus. It is the syllabus you are being tested on. The Learn 2 statements on page 40 of the syllabus turned up in section 2, question 2, of the 2016 Studies of Religion exam paper. Note the flow of marks in these questions. The more detail you need, the more marks are allocated to that part of the question. At the NESA website where you found the past papers for Studies of Religion, you will also find the marking guide for a particular year's exam. For example, this marking guide is for Section 2 Question 2 of the 2016 HSE Studies of Religion exam. 
that question was the previous slide. If you were to attempt that question yourself, you could then go to the marking guide to see how your response would have aligned with the marking criteria. If you have questions about this, have a chat with your teacher. Same page where you found the past paper and marking guide, you will also find HSC Marking Feedback Course Specific Marker Notes. This gives you a clear understanding of what the markers for the exam, in this case the 2016 Studies of Religion exam, felt was done very well and what aspect of student responses needed improving. You should pay attention to these comments. Question 2, Christianity. Candidates showed strength in these areas. Clearly and accurately focusing on the significance of the chosen practice for the Christian community as a whole. Making reference to the principal beliefs of Christianity. Including sacred texts and biblical references effectively to further support the response. Making sustained and accurate references to the stimulus throughout the response. Including sacred text references to support an argument. Making clear and accurate judgments. Candidates needed to improve in these areas. Focusing on the intent of the question rather than being overly descriptive of the chosen practice. Focusing on the significance for the individual rather than the community. Providing too much information rather than using the number of lines provided as a guide to the response required. Being overly descriptive and biographical in nature and providing an overly long response which did not make a clear and sustained reference to the stimulus. At quiz.nessa.nsw.edu.au forward slash home, you'll find a useful tool to check your multiple choice skills and ability with such questions. You create your own self-marking multiple choice quiz using any combination of past NESA HSC exam papers for each subject. It's a useful study tool for you. Remember, in multiple choice, one of the answers is correct. <laughs> Baptism, Christianity, Brief Revision, Background Information and Definition. Baptism, a sign, a symbol, a sacrament. A sign typically points to a present reality and its meaning is usually obvious or self-evident. A speed sign of 60 km per hour means 60, not 80 or 100. A symbol typically has a language of meaning to itself. A candle can be a source of light in a dark room. It can have a further meaning, as at Easter, where it points to the reality of Christ risen. A sacrament is instituted by Christ, and through the reception of the sacrament, the grace of God is received. So baptism is a sign of regeneration. It is a symbol of hope and of the presence of God active in the world. It is a sacrament instituted by Christ in Matthew 28, through which the love and grace of God is received by the individual and the church. As a ritual, baptism existed prior to the establishment of Christianity. Think of John the Baptist baptising in the River Jordan. Ritual baptism involved purification, commitment and conversion. Baptism in Christianity provides a new layer of meaning to what baptism is and perhaps isn't. For example, a purification and commitment ritual can be found in Luke chapter 2, the presentation of Jesus in the temple. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem 
to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord. Likewise, we find a commitment and purification ceremony or ritual in Matthew chapter 3, the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptised by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptised by you, and yet you are coming to me. Jesus said to him in reply, Allow it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfil all of righteousness. For your HSC exam, you will need a good working definition that covers the whole of Christianity, not just the Catholic or Orthodox Church variants. In 2012, Michael Reed wrote, Baptism is the ordinary rite of initiation by which most Christian churches welcome new members to their faith community. I would add, typically through the use of water and the Trinitarian formula. St Thomas Aquinas gives this definition. Baptism is the external ablution of the body performed with the prescribed form of words. Later, theologians generally distinguish formally between the physical and the metaphysical defining of this sacrament. By the former, they understand the formula expressing the action of ablution and the utterance of the invocation of the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. By the latter, the definition sacrament of regeneration, or that institution of Christ by which we are born to spiritual life. You may wish to pause here to update your notes. Baptism, Christianity, Summary, Definitions, Backgrounds, Beliefs and Effects. Baptism defined. Baptism is the ordinary rite of initiation by which most Christian churches welcome new members into their faith community typically through the use of water and the Trinitarian formula. The word most is important. Not all churches baptise, not all churches see baptism as a sacrament, and not all churches hold the same set of beliefs. Different churches will perform the ritual differently. Believer or adult baptism is practised by some, for example the Baptist Church. Baptism for infants, children and adults are practised by many churches. These believe that baptism is the start of a lifelong journey with God. It is a beginning that is called to develop. This is found in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Baptism affects summary. At its heart, baptism outwardly reflects the belief of Christianity that we are in a relationship with a loving God. Relationships require effort from both parties in order to work. The relationship is between the baptised, the individual, and God, and also with the faith community in its relationship with God, communal. Baptism uses the Trinitarian formula, recognising belief in one God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Baptism reflects faith in the relationship with God. Baptism reflects faith in the faith community. The faith community is more than the local church. The word Catholic with a small c literally means universal. You are therefore a part of something much bigger than yourself. As an initiation, baptism brings the person into a new life in Christ. Baptism requires flowing water. Flowing water is often referred to in the scriptures as living water. For example, in Zechariah chapter 14, on that day, living waters shall flow out from Jerusalem, half of them to the eastern sea and half of them to the western sea. It shall continue in summer as in winter. Likewise, in John chapter 4, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Also in chapter 7 of John, And let the one who believes in me drink, as the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. 
The symbol of living water connects us to the waters of creation found in Genesis 1. The great flood in Genesis 6 through to 9, with the notation that God creates a covenant with Noah in Genesis chapter 9. Likewise, the flight from Egypt in Exodus chapter 14 and the journey to the promised land of Canaan in Joshua chapter 1. St. Augustine, writing in the 4th century, said that baptism is being about relationship and renewal. As the individual enters into a baptismal covenant with God, they receive the grace of God. As baptism requires the adherent to be in communio, from which we derive the word communion, the faith community benefits from such grace. To be baptised is to have entered into a covenant relationship with God through the person of Jesus Christ. For the baptised, salvation flows from their baptism. As St Augustine stated, baptism affects salvation. Baptism, according to St Augustine, requires two things, the candidate to have faith in God and the candidate's use of water for the baptism. In baptism, we use the Nicene Creed, or the Apostles' Creed. In the Nicene Creed, we read, I believe in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. In mainstream denominations, variants such as the Roman Catholic, Orthodox, Anglican, the Presbyterian and Methodist, which make up the Uniting Church, for them, baptism is a sacrament. In others, such as the Baptist, the Pentecostal and the Seventh-day Adventist churches, baptism is a symbolic ceremony. The symbolic nature of baptism comes from churches in the Reformation who rejected the need for human cooperation with God, as in baptism, to bring about the salvation of God. God alone saves. These churches often refer to baptism as an ordinance, an order from Christ, as in Matthew chapter 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Note here, the Salvation Army is a Christian variant. However, they use affirmation of faith in place of baptism. You may wish to press pause here to update your notes. Baptism, Christianity, Summary Effects on individual, adherent Effects on faith community, variant And baptism, validity Baptism, effects on the individual Initiation into a Christian church is not unlike joining a club, such as a sporting club the decision to join means you are making a commitment to the club, in this instance the church. A commitment to applying their teachings to your life and engaging in the practices and life of the faith community. In infant baptism, the parents and godparents make this commitment on the child's behalf. Through baptism you have become part of the body of Christ, as Paul of Tarsus states, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. The baptised share in the ministry and the life of Jesus Christ, as we find in Paul's letter to the Galatians. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring is according to the promise. Through the waters of baptism, you are born anew into Christ and have the promise of eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, 
so we too might walk in newness of life. Paul's letter to the Romans. Discipleship is a term given to those who seek to follow and imitate Christ in all that they do. This is the duty and cost associated with baptism. Baptism is a commitment to love one another. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. To follow Christ and to imitate Christ in all you do is both a privilege and a challenge. Then he said to them all, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. It is a sacrament in many churches and that means living a life filled with grace of God. Through baptism, we are freed from sin and reborn as sons and daughters of God. We become members of Christ, are incorporated into the church and made sharers in her mission. Baptism is the sacrament of regeneration through water in the word. The sacrament is also called the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit, for it signifies and actually brings about the birth of water and the spirit without which no one can enter the kingdom of heaven. You may wish to press pause here to update your notes. Baptism effects on the faith community. A person is always baptised into a faith community. Baptism is therefore regenerative for that faith community, as they add to their number. We find this in Acts chapter 2. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Since the faith community welcomed the person through the waters of baptism, they have an obligation to journey with them, to nurture and support them through examples and through opportunities, example faith formation programs. This is implied in Acts chapter 2 as cited above. Baptism establishes a covenant with God. The baptised are called in the ceremony to be a priest, a prophet and a king. The baptised are called to minister, they are called to read the signs of the times and through their leadership to act accordingly, knowing that this will often mean acting in a countercultural manner. The faith community needs to develop and offer support to the baptised members so that they can live out their baptismal covenant. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like the one who serves. I am among you as one who serves. The faith community must nurture the baptised and use their talents to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. In doing so, synergy, the sum of all parts is greater than the individual parts, is created. The faith community also has an obligation under the principles of good stewardship to manage the talent amongst the baptised appropriately. Think of us in this way as servants of Christ and stewards of God's mysteries. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. The baptised belong not just to the local faith community, but to a much larger one that is universal. The word Catholic, with the small c, means universal. They belong to the universal Christian tradition that has shared, suffered and proclaimed their faith for over 2,000 years. I have raised you up for the very purpose of showing my power in you so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. For the faith community, baptism is regenerative, as they add to their number and thus give life to the local community of believers. The witness given of the newly baptised gives hope and encouragement to the believers or adherents 
that have been on the faith journey longer. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all, according to Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Baptism, what makes it valid? The majority of churches, Orthodox, Oriental and Latin, the Roman Catholic churches, and various churches of the Reformation, accept as valid any baptism in which the use of water and the Trinitarian formula was used. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The institution of baptism found in Matthew chapter 28. Some evangelical churches baptise only in the name of Jesus, citing Acts chapter 2 as the authority to do so. In this instance, the validity may depend on what they were intending to do and whether they used the phrase, I baptise you. For matters of validity, in the first instance, the document Australian Churches Covenanting Together should be read. You may wish to press pause here to update your notes. Baptism, Christianity, Summary Chart, Beliefs and Practices in Five Christian Variants. Our Summary of Baptism and Beliefs in Five Christian Variants. Baptism, the key beliefs. This slide summarises some key beliefs about baptism as they relate to the five variants studied in this presentation. This chart is colour coded. Green means that the church or the variant holds that belief. Yellow indicates that the church or variant holds the belief with some caveat. Red, that the belief is not held by the church or variant or they hold an alternate belief. The majority of churches hold that faith plus baptism is required for salvation. The Baptist Church, however, states that baptism is not required for salvation. Salvation comes from God. The majority of the church of variants would see baptism as a sacrament that brings the grace of God. Likewise, most of the variants would agree that it is a sacrament of initiation and gives access to the other sacraments of initiation. Most of the variants agree that baptism forgives sin. All of the variants agree that baptism gives membership of the church. Baptism is a spiritual new birth and regeneration that affects the individual and the faith community. Baptism gives union with Christ. And baptism establishes a new covenant relationship with God. The Orthodox variant, for example, sees that faith plus baptism is required for salvation. They see baptism as a sacrament that brings the grace of God. They also see baptism as the first sacrament of initiation, giving rise to other sacraments of initiation, such as chrismation. Baptism forgives sins. Baptism gives membership to the church. Baptism is a spiritual new birth and regeneration which affects the individual and the faith community. Baptism gives union with Christ, and baptism establishes a new covenant relationship with God. The Catholic Church holds similar beliefs about baptism to the Orthodox Church. The Catholic Church states that faith plus baptism is required for salvation, that baptism is a sacrament and brings the grace of God. Baptism is a sacrament of initiation and gives rise to the other sacraments of initiation, such as Confirmation and Eucharist. Baptism forgives sin. 
Baptism gives membership of the church. Baptism is a new birth and regeneration in the spiritual life, giving effect of that to the individual and to the faith community. Baptism brings union with Christ, and baptism establishes a new covenant relationship with God. You may wish to press pause here to update your notes. The Anglican variant holds similar teachings to the Catholic variant when it comes to baptism. The Anglican variant says that faith plus baptism is required for salvation. Baptism is a sacrament, and according to the Anglican Church's 39 Articles of Religion, baptism is one of the sacraments of initiation, the other being Eucharist, or Holy Communion. Baptism forgives sin. Baptism gives membership of the Church. Baptism is a new birth and regeneration in Christ that affects the individual and the faith community. Baptism brings union with Christ, and baptism establishes a new covenant relationship. The Uniting Church would hold that faith plus baptism is required for salvation, and that baptism is a sacrament. They would hold, however, that baptism is a complete sacrament of initiation in its own right, and does not need any other sacraments of initiation. Baptism forgives sin. Baptism gives membership of the Church. Baptism brings new birth and regeneration in the Spirit, and that affects the individual and the faith community. Baptism brings union with Christ, and baptism establishes a new covenant relationship. Baptist Church Baptism in the Baptist Church, baptism and faith are not required for salvation. Salvation comes from God alone. Therefore, baptism is not a sacrament, but rather a symbol. They therefore have no other sacraments of initiation. Baptism does not forgive sin, but rather faith in Jesus Christ forgives sin, and your faith in Jesus Christ that forgives sin indicates that you are ready to be baptised. Baptism does give membership to the church. They do hold that it is a spiritual transformation. It brings union with Christ and that baptism is a symbol of the new covenant relationship that you have established with God. You may wish to press pause here to update your notes. Baptism, the key beliefs, the summary. This slide shows us the key beliefs in the left-hand column and the beliefs held by the different variants studied in this presentation. What we can see at a glance is that the majority of the variants hold those key beliefs. As expected, there are some differences. You may wish to press pause here to update your notes and note in particular the similarities and the differences between the different variants and the key beliefs. Our summary of baptism practices in five Christian variants. Baptism, the key practices. This presentation will look at the key practices of infant, child and adult baptism, the use of pouring of water or effusion in baptism, the use of sprinkling of water or aspersion in baptism, the use of immersion in water or immersion in baptism the use of godparents, sponsors or witnesses to the baptism, the use of water and the Trinitarian formula, the idea of a new covenant relationship being established through baptism, and the use of baptism symbols such as a candle or a white garment. The Orthodox Church practices baptism of infants, children and adults. They will baptise using immersion in water only. They have a godparent, and that godparent is responsible for ensuring the baptised child comes to the chrismation ceremony and is also bathed after the baptism has occurred. The Orthodox Church uses water and the Trinitarian formula. 
They believe that baptism establishes a new covenant relationship and they do use candles and white garments as symbols of the baptism. For further information, you can go to the Greek Orthodox website indicated at the bottom of their column on the slide. Catholic Church Baptism, the Practice The Catholic Church baptises infants, children and adults. It does so with effusion or pouring of water or by immersion in water. Rarely does the Catholic Church use aspersion or sprinkling of water for baptism. The Catholic Rite of Baptism has godparents. A godparent will assist and cooperate with the parent in raising the infant in the ways of Catholic belief and practice. The godparent and parent make the baptismal promises on behalf of the infant in the rite of baptism. The Catholic Church also has a rite of Christian initiation of adults. The candidate will have a sponsor who journeys with them through to the Easter Vigil where they will receive the sacraments of baptism, confirmation and Eucharist. During this time, they will assist in the instruction of the candidate and will continue to journey with the candidate in the months after baptism in the period known as mystagogy. The Catholic Church uses water and the Trinitarian formula. It has the belief that baptism establishes a new covenant relationship with God and uses symbols at baptism such as the baptism candle, which is lit from the Easter candle, signifying that baptism takes the believer to new life. This newness of life is also indicated with the symbol of the white garment. Information regarding the Catholic Church and mutual recognition of baptism in other variants can be found at the end of the Catholic Church column on this slide. You may wish to press pause here to update your notes. Anglican Baptism, the practice. The Anglican Church will baptise infants, children and adults. It does so using effusion or pouring of water, sprinkling or aspersion of water, or immersion in water. As with the Orthodox and the Catholic variant, the Anglican variant will also use godparents or sponsors, particularly for infant baptism. The Anglican Church uses water and the Trinitarian formula and believe that baptism establishes a new covenant relationship with God. In their rite of baptism, they will use symbols such as a baptism candle and a white garment. For further information on Anglican baptism, you can follow the link at the end of their column. Uniting Church Baptism, the practice. The Uniting Church will baptise infants, children and adults. It will do so using pouring or effusion of water, sprinkling or aspersion of water, or immersion in water. They will have in their rite of baptism the use of a godparent or sponsor, and they follow the baptism with water and the Trinitarian formula. The Uniting Church believes that baptism establishes a covenant relationship with God, and they will use symbols such as a baptism candle and a white garment. For information regarding the baptism in the Uniting Church, please follow their link at the end of their column. Baptist Church Baptism The Baptist Church will only baptise adults, or what is called believer baptism. By adult, we mean a person who is able to attest to their own faith in Jesus Christ. They will only baptise using immersion in water. And rather than godparents and sponsors, the gathered community are witnesses to the baptism. They baptise using water and the Trinitarian formula, but they see the baptism as a symbol of the covenant already established with God. In terms of baptism symbols, they will use the baptism robe. For more information, you can click the links at the bottom of the Baptist Church column on the slide. Baptism, the practice, the summary. And so when we look at the five variants studied in this presentation, 
and we look at the key practices that we have identified in the left hand column, we find that the majority of the variants studied in this presentation will follow those key practices. Where they don't, it results in a slightly different way of doing baptism and a slightly different understanding of those practices. You may like to take the time now to note the similarities and differences between the different variants and the key practices for baptism. You may wish to press pause to update your notes. Baptism, the links. At the end of each column, you will have noticed that there is a link for you to follow. These links give you further information about baptism and that particular variant. You should also note that there is an agreement between the mainstream Christian churches in Australia. In the document Australian Churches Covenanting Together, you'll find a list of who those churches are that have this mutual agreement and recognition of each other's baptism and what that involves. You can download it from the link on the right hand side at the bottom of the slide. You should also note that from that agreement, the Orthodox, Roman Catholic, Anglican and United Church have agreed to use a common baptism certificate indicating that water and the Trinitarian formula was used, making mutual recognition a lot easier. And so a recap on our summary chart for baptism practices. Always remember that sitting behind these practices is a theology around baptism, and that will usually involve belonging and membership and sharing in the life, ministry, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You may wish to press pause here to update your notes. That concludes this presentation and the three-part series on baptism. You may want to take time to consolidate your notes. You can find all of the links in the transcript to this presentation, which is also available on RE Online. Good luck.